Hi everyone, my name is Janet Laka and I'm Trinity's mom. Everyone, most of you all saw her yesterday talk about her activities as a, a young black girl. She's nine years old and I'm a single mom and I'm very proud of her. But today I'm not going to talk about Trinity. I'm going to talk about the topic that Julie Macapilla gave me, uh, which is the barriers that affect young black youth in Africa and in the UK. And I'm also going to talk about being a single black mother as well, because that's a big hindrance as well. Anyway, so first of all, I just want to give a huge thank you to Julie Macapilla for giving me this platform to, you know, voice my views on the concerns that I see that affect the black youth in this country and in Africa. Yeah, so the first topic that I want to talk about is on lack of education. Um, a lot of the black kids in Africa, they... They're not educated, not because they don't want to be educated, it's because they come from homes where there's a lot of poverty and the parents can't afford to pay their fees. So they, they're not able to go to school or attend any activities at all to focus them onto something. So even if they're not going to school, there is no other activities that these kids can focus on so they can stay focused and on the straight and narrow. So most of them end up just staying at home or just on the streets doing nothing and then they end up in trouble. Yeah, so that's another big barrier that affects the black youth, in, especially in Africa. And in here, you know, the main hindrance with the black youth is uh, kids coming from single father. You know, a lot of people say single father homes, like the people that don't have fathers in their homes. The kids normally tend to be like on the streets, knife crime and, you know, causing trouble and stuff. But I just want to say that that's not necessarily the case because of a lot of, I know a lot of so many, you know, I'm one of them. I never had a dad in my life, you know, but I'm fine. I do not, I'm not smoking, you know, drugs or doing, you know, anything bad or anything. I've never been in trouble with the law, you know, so, and there are a lot of people who never grew up with their fathers and they're doing well, you know, so we need to stop this excuse that or kids that don't have fathers in their, in their lives are the ones who are out there, you know, having so many barriers about finding the right jobs and going to school and getting in trouble with the law. That is necessarily not the case. You know, I feel like it's the lessons that a parent teaches you at home that you, you, you know, that you learn, you know, if you have enough support at home, if you have enough, you know, um, compassionate parents, parents who are ready to listen to you and support you and guide you, then I don't think, you know, there will be any problem with any black youths in this country or in Africa for that matter, you know, and there's not really enough time to discuss this topic because I feel like it's a huge topic that needs to be looked at properly and carefully because it's a very, very sensitive topic that I don't want to delve too much into it because I don't have enough time to, to go into it deeper, you know, and another thing that I want to talk about uh, is uh, about Black Lives Matter movement. I want to talk about that quickly before I talk about, you know, um, being a single mother. Uh, I feel like uh, with Black Lives Matter, there's a lot of um, problems because the youth, are, they listen to, you know, people like us who are like growing, who've grown up, you know, now, you know, and, and you know, we they look to us, we, you know, when, for example, I'm a model, so like I'm a role model for a lot of young black kids who I, I know, you know, who look up to me and they want to become models just like me, you know, so when I do something or I post something, you know, they see me and they want to emulate what I do. So if I go out there and I'm shouting Black Lives Matter, support black businesses, this is what we need to do as black people, and then I'm doing the, the, the wrong thing that doesn't reflect what I'm trying to protest on the street, then that's a negative, you know, issue that is, you know, it will come as a barrier to the young youth here and also in Africa. Because if you are not doing what, you know, what, you, you don't reflect what you're, what you're talking about, then that is sending a negative message, which is affecting the black kids as well. You know, because, you know, uh, a lot of black people who are protesting Black Lives Matter, they don't actually practice the Black Lives Matter movement. Because in Africa, there's so much tribalism, which is even worse than Black Lives Matter, than Black Lives Matter movement here. 
You know, there's racism, serious racism here, but there's also serious and dangerous racism in Africa. I grew up half of my life here and half of my life in, in Africa. And I was seriously, seriously like bullied for being dark skin and for coming from the Northern part of Uganda. And I was born in Kampala. I've never even been to my own hometown. You know, but I used to get bullied at school as a young black child in my country. I'm a citizen of Uganda and I still used to be bullied for being dark skinned and being called a monkey that I should, you know, there's certain names that I don't know how to translate them into English that are really, really horrible that they used to say them to me and say I should go back to my place. My goodness. I'm in my place in Kampala. It's the capital city of Uganda. It's for everyone. Everyone is allowed to be in Kampala. You know, you can't send me away. Send me away to where? Where? I don't know that place you're sending me to. I've never been there. You know, this is where I've born. I was born. I belong here in Kampala, just like you. We are all one people. We need to love each other and treat each other equal. Anyway, um... Black Lives Matter movement and racism is also, and tribalism is another big, huge topic that, you know, it's another topic for another day. But I just wanted to touch on it as well. So uh, my last topic, because I don't have enough time. So I just want to talk about being a single mom, you know, as a single black mother in this country is so hard and there's a lot of young youth who are single mothers, you know, they're, they're babies themselves, you know, I, it's hard, you know, being a single mom. You can't. You feel like your life has ended. Basically, when you have a child, and you're you're young as well, and you have no support, you know, on um, from you know from uh, uh, your, your father's child, you're not getting support to look after your child. Everything falls on you. You can't do anything. Now I studied law. I've got a master's degree in law and I also went back to do my LPC. I did the first year and I loved it and I could not complete the second year because I did not have the funds to complete the to complete my final year because I had Trinity at that time and I couldn't work to you know to help me you know pay for for my second year fees which was 2000 pounds and I didn't have it. You know so I had to tell I had to go and speak to my tutor and tell my tutor that even though I really want to become a lawyer, I just can't because I don't have the funds. So I had to stop. You know, that's also another very, very bad thing that, you know, like bad hindrance that, you know, the youth, you know, face, you know, and, and single mothers, they go through it, which is really bad. And which is why one of the reasons why I missed my slot yesterday, because I was doing school run and I my phone was not connecting. So I had to wait till I got home to connect to my, my network at home and on, to, on the computer. So by the time I, I got home, my slot had passed, you know. Um, so being a single mom is a huge, huge problem, you know, in this country, especially for black mothers. And we don't get enough support even from our own black, you know, parents because everything we do, we are criticized on how we raise our kids. We criticize on everything we do. You know, mind you, I was criticized for when I got pregnant. My mom didn't speak to me for two weeks. When I told her I was pregnant, she hung up on me. My cousin had to call her back and say, what? You know, but it's okay because, and the thing is, I had finished my master's degree at that point. I don't talk, I don't smoke drugs. I don't take drugs. I'm not an alcoholic. I drink alcohol, but I'm a straight up stand up girl. You know, I did everything my parents taught me. My, I was brought up by my grandparents. They taught me right, and I did everything that they told me to do. I went to school. I did everything. I was working. I did everything. I was working. I was going to school full-time at uni, and I was working every single day. I would come home at midnight every day. I worked. So when I finished, I thought, you know, oh, yeah, I have this person I've been seeing for seven years, and now I'm pregnant, and I'm telling my parent I'm pregnant, and they're not happy about it. Why are you not happy? What else do you want me to do? So that's another problem that we have in black homes, the lack of support and com compassion, you know, that we don't get, which is very, very hard. So which, you know, is also another big topic that we need to actually discuss on another day, you know, to see, to find, to reach a solution, you know, like, you know, the people, the black, you know, 
people who are in, you know, powerful positions, you know, who can help us and sort us and, you know, with solutions, you know. So I'm here for any uh, any black, you know, youths out there. I'm here if they need to talk or they feel like they can't talk to their, their, their parents. I'm here to listen and to give support in any way possible that I can. So on that note, I'm going to end this now because my time is up because I don't have enough time to send this vi <laughs> this video, but I wish I had longer time. But I just want to thank Julie. Thank you so much for giving me this platform. Even though it's a short time, I just want to give a huge thank you for your support always. And if, if you need me for anything, I'm always available. Thank you very much. Have a good day and stay safe, everyone. Bye-bye.